Um, welcome back. We have another wonderful session around DCMHS, but um, basically modular hardware system. We're going to take it to another um, angle. Uh, this time, we're going to talk about uh, multi-node capabilities. Uh, I'm Siamak Tavalai. Um, I'm involved with OCP at several project uh, level. Um, I serve uh, as the incubation committee lead, um, um, supporting contributions that come in for review. Um, my name is Dirk Blevins. I'm a senior platform architect and principal engineer at Intel. I'm also the DCMHS um, MDNO, the Modular Density Optimized uh, Workstream Lead, and I am going to be leading a new session we're talking about called the Shared Infrastructure um, uh, Workstream out of the DCMHS, talking about some of the multi-host modular systems that we're here to talk about today. Sean? And I am Sean Duby with Dell. I am in the CTO group uh, handling architecture pathfinding, and I am co-lead on DCMHS. Um, Sean, Sean and Dirk have been very active uh, within the DCMHS uh, work group. Um, the specifications that you have seen, uh, 1.0 version of DCMHS is out, consists of six major specifications. Uh, thank you, guys. Thanks. Well, um, the, the, the way that we work at um, OCP, um, OCP is a great place for integrating solutions and technologies from uh, elsewhere. Uh, CXL, PCIe, um, NVMe, great technology is done outside. Uh, emerging technologies show up. CXL is an example. And we build software ingredients on it and put them in nice enclosures. We work together. And uh, if we are successful in adding software ingredients on it, um, infrastructure software, firmware, um, um, management, security, telemetry, test and validation, then we can create an integrated solution, uh, software and hardware integrated solution. Once it is that way, then it is useful for others um, to build products out of that if they want and serve uh, multiple data centers, uh, enterprise data centers, hyperscale uh, data centers, or edge data centers. So that is the high level idea and we have thought that perhaps if we build these systems in a modular way, it is more possible, more uh, um, opportunities for people to pick and choose which areas they want to innovate. So in specific, CXL is a technology that brings in new capabilities for us. And we as a community of OCP um, haven't worked together in building systems around CXL yet. It is good to know that uh, CXL brings in point-to-point um, -point solutions very similar to PCIe did. Uh, switch fabric cap capabilities are there and um, devices that can be connected to more than one host. Devices can be um, memory, memory um, expanders or accelerators. They can have multiple ports. Bifurcating a PCIe or CXL port into multiple port is something that we have done before. But in this model, new use cases emerge that we might actually want to do that. And when we want to do that, um, it requires enclosures, it requires cabling, backplanes, connectors, all of the type of things that OCP is very good at. So when we start talking about multi-node systems, we have uh, a lot of different choices to, to speak to. E even just within a what we call multi-node can have different meanings. Well, one of the uh, the models that we use just internally to help with uh, with our own understanding of it and for discussion here is this fun analogy to, to what we call the hotel. So hotels are made up of many different things. We have the check-in desk, we have the, uh, the swimming pool, we have the fitness center, we have the dining uh, restaurant, um, but then there are also the individual rooms. And this is the analogy that we're using a bit for describing 
uh, a multi-node or a shared infrastructure system. So at the very top level, or at least in this diagram, the top level, we have the individual hotel rooms. So it's where a compute node can live. So we have a lot of these different slots that uh, the, the, the compute, the CPU, or some other type of processing device can go into. Now, that analogy goes a little bit further that maybe somebody needs a little bit more extra room. So there's always the possibility of renting two rooms for one use. The next tier down, what's labeled here as the mezzanine tier, these are the, the common elements. The swimming pool, the restaurant, and so forth. These are, in our analogy, the, the, the resources that can be used. Maybe they're very simple, a shared NIC, shared, um, a shared storage device, but maybe it's something much more complex. It's a, provide, it's a switch that provides connectivity uh, amongst the devices or the compute nodes or connectivity outside. And then at the lowest tier is the expansion, uh, the expansion terminal here where this is going outside the perimeter, going out to something else uh, to have additional resources. Memory, memory is a very popular one now with CXL uh, for what it's offering, uh, having pooled memory, shared memory. But we also have other things such as storage or accelerators. And then uh, not necessarily in the drawing, but you have the registration desk uh, that's within the hotel. That could be very much an analogy for um, any type of fabric manager, chassis manager, anything else that's helping to orchestrate the overall solution. It is, uh, it's actually good to um, use the place that we are. Uh, there's a hotel right here, independent rooms are there. And we are basically on the mezzanine level. We have a shared resource and we have actually come from outside. So this was perhaps available to the uh, hotel residents as a shared or pooled uh, resource, but it is also rented out to people from outside. From outside, you come in. So this, this expansion uh, uh, interconnects allow external people to come in as well. So that's another uh, notion that we would like to enable. When these guys shared this analogy with me, I was like, man, this I just get it. <laughs> I get it. So you got to give CMAC credit for the analogy, in all fairness. All right, and th this is kind of just putting it a, a little bit more in computer terms. Um, so still more of the, uh, the hotel analogy, but here we see the different levels of the compute nodes, uh, the hotel rooms hosting the compute. We have the hotel mezzanine interconnecting, and uh, this is where we're excited to see CXL as a, as a pathway uh, to interconnecting. Maybe we will have solutions that are not CXL, but by all means, we want to enable CXL uh, for what it will offer us with expanding out to uh, uh, shared resources and external resources. Okay, and this, this is uh, showing for, furthermore of the, the analogy, the, uh, the different kinds of rooms that you can have. In the, the far left picture, we have a, a classic two socket uh, HPM uh, with two CPUs. Uh, it has a, a BMC with root of trust, a smart NIC, and additional add-in cards, uh, each with their own root of trust. But then on the next, the next slide over, or the next uh, column over, is a different kind of room. Instead of the presidential suite, it's just a deluxe room. Now this one starts to introduce uh, additional concepts here. We have two HPMs that are very well independent of each other. It's, it's a multi-host or a uh, multi-domain, uh, multiple uh, SMP domain as an example, multiple OS, and, but it's still being, um, uh, resource or sharing um, the BMC, DCMHS as an example, uh, being managed by both. And then on the far right is a you know, continuation of the, the hotel mezzanine, um, the expansion chassis uh, with resources. This is a, a, a another um, example of the affinity that the control elements have to each other. Uh, DCSCM and SmartNIC, uh, you see there's one, one block that shows them being close to each other. Uh, they're controlling the system, they're interconnected to each other, so um, it's a good point to make because as we build systems, we might want to have a special place for them. 
So as we look through this, you know, we've looked at some of the, the physical topologies. As we start to understand, I'm going to take you through a quick little journey of how these things play out and how they, they move through. So if you look at the single node representation and we look at it from an implementation standpoint, you have to have all the elements that go into a solution. Now we've been talking a lot about DCMHS and DCSCM and SmartNICs and all these various things, but we're doing this for a greater reason. We're doing this because all these things are gonna come together, they're gonna play together, we're gonna implement software that implements these future solutions, and it all starts at the simplest building block, which would basically be a single node representation that we all know and love. You know, so we've, we've been doing this for a long time. Now, if you look as we move to the future though, the future starts to introduce more complexities. Now you start to introduce a situation where you want to have more pooled, more shared resources. You have multiple uh, HPMs that will be attaching to single management infrastructures that's controlling entire chassis. You have to have interoperability with expansion chassis. This stuff starts to get a lot more complex, a lot more capable, and we need further specification and definition to ensure that we have interoperability between all of these particular elements. One, one, one way to get there is to start with reference designs. Oh yeah. So, so this is another reason that we are here is to uh, eventually recruit uh, more collaborators so we can define these things and start building something in the form of a reference design uh, that perhaps a year from now we would have some prototypes. Yeah, much like we started the MHS work a year ago, now we're seeing them out on the show floor this year. You know, right, so. exactly. So it, it, it works very well that uh, during uh, OCP Summit, just like today, we talk about futuristic things. We don't have a solution today yet, but we know that you guys are smart, you're going to come and help us, and we could maybe promise by a regional summit in April, we would have a, um, a half-baked specification <laughs> 0.5, 0.7. That's about what it was. But, but, <laughs> but that was good enough for uh, people to use yeah. to start actually prototypes. And there are some prototypes on DCMHS. Uh, basically, you saw that on the show floor and a, on the um, keynote speech as something that was built on basically 0.7 version of the spec. Yeah, it's beautiful, too, that people followed along with the spec. I've worked in different spec bodies over the year. Ethernet is a common one to where people build with the spec, trying to be first out there, first adopters. And I saw the same thing happen in this particular instance and would love to see it again with the shared infrastructure stuff. So now if we go back to the complexity and some of the association of what we were looking at previously, um, some of the things that CMAC was just mentioning, you know, you have close proximity and interrelationships of management of these systems that's going to be not only talking about management of the physical elements of the system, but also uh, understanding, discovering, and provisioning various elements of the fabric uh, management capabilities as well. So you're gonna need to have more complexities. These things are oftentimes captured in a couple of different elements as currently defined, but these elements must work uh, together. And you're looking at uh, these solutions being implemented through what we're calling the DC MHIB, which is the Management Hub Interface Board, that would allow you to be able to connect up and have uh, this communication and capabilities between all of these different pieces in the system. You guys wanna add anything to that? Yeah, it could be thought of as multi-host interface board as well. So. Yeah. Um, we have good names for this. I'm gonna change the name in a, f in a few minutes. Shared infrastructure, baby. <laughs> so, and as you look at this, it further builds out. You know, we start taking into account of all the elements that we've used over the, the multiple years we've been developing these things. You know, this is one possibility to dream about how this might come to realization with using the DCI interconnect to be able to touch multiple hotel rooms or multiple hosts um, in a system. You know, then you have the ability to have the smart NIC that can be shared uh, as an element across all of these private entity or private domains. But then you could also have the shared resources that you have to talk to um, through the expansion chassis. So there's a, a lot of capability, a lot of complexities, and there has to be interoperation and capabilities to be able to uh, have visibility in what these systems are doing, provisioning, and deploying. 
So, so basically, uh, one central element in all of the conversation we have here is we are part of OCP. We integrate uh, great technologies together in a useful way. Um, when uh, the solutions exist outside, we'll just use them. RMII, for example, exists. Uh, DCSCI is the interface between DCSCM and HPM that was produced and went to specification a year ago and then 2.0 version of it happened just recently as well. So those things do exist. When those things don't exist, we make them, we define them, we receive feedback, we put them into a specification, and we push it out to um, libraries. Now, the later those elements, we will reuse in some other environment. So in this example, you see that a lot of these uh, interfaces are basically standard. So we don't want to reinvent the wheel necessarily. We would like to just use them, put them into a good, good shape. So see, Mac, take us home, man. We're, what's the call to action here? You know, with that said. Yeah. Well, uh, again, there's a lot of good work going on. Um, we are part of the server project. Within the server project, we have a number of sub-projects already, OAI, DCSCM, um, OCP NIC, as we just talked about, HPC, all of those, and, and the new, newly, uh, hopefully formed soon, uh, DCMHS as subgroups. These are all um, cutting different aspects of the problem, but we basically need to put them all together as systems architects and system designers so that eventually products can be built on them and software can be uh, written on them. What we need uh, is more than just specs, we need systems. We need uh, hardware to be in the lab so software guys can start working and making uh, things interoperable, uh, test out the type of things that we built for them. If there is something wrong with it, we'd like to get feedback as soon as possible. So that's the call to action might be that come join us, um, identify use cases, help us define a specification for those, and then more than that, perhaps participate in work groups and um, hopefully come up with some reference designs for these things. Sean, you got anything you want to conclude? No, it's uh, just continuing on the journey here. We're taking DCMHS. We've gotten to our, our uh, first revision, now continuing on to expand out. And this is exciting that now we're now getting into shared infrastructure and then leading the way to, to uh, disaggregated computing. Yeah, and I, I echo those comments, and, and this, this topic, these guys will tell you, really excites me. I get really energetic about it. I think there's a lot of opportunities, and all the things you've been hearing about for the last couple of hours and, and the session before this, we're looking at how to make all these things interoperable, make them all work together, and work together seamlessly. So that's the key to this. It's To me, it's not really about just modularity. We've done modularity. It's about interoperable modularity. It's about making this stuff work together as building blocks, as Lego blocks, and bringing the vision that these guys and, and the others started. I mean, it's, it's, to me, it's a really exciting thing. So, um, uh, If you would go, please go to the diagram that showed the interconnects. The, show the, which one? the interconnects, any of them. Yeah, it's maybe the simplest one. The, the first one. Simple. The simplest one. Yeah, th this is good. So. Um, if we define individual modules and interfaces to other modules, man, we have done two-thirds, three-fourths of the work already. Uh, that can allow software guys to start dreaming about what they want to do, what they want to control, how they want to move data, and uh, how, what, what they need to do to secure things. So th defining the interfaces is basically great work, work to be done. Another, another point I should, uh, should uh, share with you, in parallel, uh, we have a full day of CXL forum going on. Um, CXL is, 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 is new, but it is real now. The reason that we are thinking about these modular concepts really come from the fact that with CXL being there, enabling these techniques, these things are possible. So let us just do them. Another plug. Um, Sean uh, and I are on board of directors of CXL. So we cannot see what's happening on CXL, what the 3.0 is, what 3.1 might be, what 4.0 might be. So we have a little bit of insight in what is around the corner. That's one of the reasons we are asking for help to build these things one step at a time. And things should not be house of cards. We need to build them, 
test them out, uh, break them, fix them, help each other, plug the holes, make them robust, fault tolerant. Um, if cables need to be developed, uh, we work together. If cables need to be stretched a little bit longer, we do the signal integrity work and the mechanical work and reliability work. All of that is in front of us as challenges, but at the end of the rainbow is a pot of gold. So CXL will bring a lot of uh, 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 capabilities to us. So we want to close for if, any questions? questions? Time? We have what four minutes for questions. Uh, it's a rich, rich set of topics if you guys want. Uh, we have experts here on the, on the stage. I'm sure they can handle your questions or we make them up. So I'm going to ask a question of you guys. So what type of system do you want people to build for you? I'm going to let the system guy answer that. Uh, we, it's, it's not just a system. It's a collection of systems. So, um, so with the shared infrastructure, um, the, the group that we've already started so far, we, we, we see where there are plenty of options. There, Yeah, there, 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 there's, there's a collection of different yeah. uh, things. We'll, well, okay, so back to the hotel. Uh, we'll have solutions where it may just be compute node and there's not much else. But then as we get into other, other types of solutions, yeah, it, it's where we have a collection of, of rich peripherals, interconnects to, to connect out. So it's not, it's not just one answer, it's, it's, a, it's a family of answers. Uh, th that is true, and the family of answers and based on time. Uh, the simplest models are when we have memory controllers uh, plugged directly to the CPU. And those can come in standard form factors such as PCIe or E3.S. Uh, people are building them and show floor, you probably see them there already. So that is, we know how to do it because we've done PCIe. But then after that might come uh, memory pooling concepts. Uh, memory pooling concepts, this diagram is actually showing a memory pooling concept. A memory device is connected to multiple hosts. These hosts can have access to multiple memory controllers, and therefore the range of uh, ratios between number of cores to memory capacity can be uh, chosen by software configurations. So software-defined concepts, memory tiering concepts, all could be possible. But we need to build systems. So this system could be a chassis, a number of um, uh, uh, processing elements, HPMs, and a number of memory elements, CXL connected memory controllers, and they are interconnected. The interconnect could be PCBs, backplanes, or, or cables. Uh, any of those are possible. So it would be good to receive some proposals for, for, for building a system, a chassis just like that. On top of it, um, you probably have already seen, CXL allows uh, larger systems using switches, and with switches you can go from chassis to chassis, you can even dream of a, maybe half a rack or a full rack ensemble of um, memory pooled elements, storage pooled elements, uh, compute elements, all interconnected to each other. Again, um, hardware without software is just produces heat. So we need to build these things. We need to build these things, provide it to software guys so they run things on it, understand how good these things are, and uh, fix their bugs. Um, make systems more reliable so we can all be uh, um, adopting these solutions. One more minute. Somebody has to have a question. <laughs> all right. If that's that, we'll call it a wrap then. Thank you all for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.